It was decided, since the population must be reduced and controlled, that it would be in the best interest of the human race to rid ourselves of the undesirable elements of our society. The joint U.S. and Soviet leadership dismissed Alternative 1, but ordered work to begin on Alternative 2 and 3 virtually at the same time. Those of you in the state of Washington who report hearing machinery underground are probably correct. In 1959, the RAND Corporation hosted a deep underground construction symposium. I have a copy of this symposium report, which I'm not supposed to have. But nevertheless, I have it, approximately this thick. In the symposium report, machines are pictured and described which could bore a tunnel 45 feet in diameter at the rate of 5 feet per hour in 1959. Just think what they can do now. It also displays pictures of huge tunnels and underground vaults containing what appear to be complex facilities and possibly even cities. It appears that the previous five years of all-out underground construction had made very significant progress by that time. The ruling powers decided that one means of funding the Alien Connected and other black projects was to corner the illegal drug market. A young, ambitious member of the Council on Foreign Relations was approached. His name is George Bush, who at the time was the president and CEO of Zapata Oil based in Texas. Zapata Oil was experimenting with the new technology of offshore drilling. It was correctly thought that the drugs could be shipped from South America to the offshore platforms by fishing boat where it would then be taken to shore by the normal transportation used for supplies and personnel. By this method, no customs or law enforcement agency would subject the cargo to search. George Bush agreed to help and organize the operation in conjunction with the CIA. The plan worked better than anyone had thought and has since expanded worldwide, and there are now many other methods of bringing the illegal drugs into the country. But it must always be remembered that George Bush began the sale of drugs to our children. Now, if you think I'm crazy, get off your butt and start digging, because you will find out that it's absolutely true. The CIA now controls all the world's illegal drug markets. The official space program was boosted by President Kennedy in his inaugural address when he mandated that the United States put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Although innocent in its conception, this mandate enabled those in charge to funnel vast amounts of money into black projects and conceal the real space program from the American people. A similar program in the Soviet Union served the same purpose. In fact, a joint alien United States and Soviet Union base already existed on the moon at the very moment Kennedy spoke the words. On May 22, 1962, a space probe landed on Mars and confirmed the existence of an environment which could support life. Not long afterward, the construction of a colony on the planet Mars began in earnest. Today, there is a colony which exists on the planet Mars. It is a United States Russian alien facility. If you believe it's outrageous, stick around a few years. <laughs> this is very disturbing information, and I don't expect anyone to believe it. I don't expect one of you to believe what I'm telling you. And I knew that when I came here. I'm not one of you. I'm not a ufologist. I'm not a researcher. I have an obligation to inform the public, and once that's done, I've done my job. From then on, it's up to you, not me. <laughs> this colony exists on Mars, populated by specially select people from different cultures and occupations taken from all over the Earth. A public shroud of antagonism between the Soviet Union and the United States has been maintained over all these years in order to fund projects in the name of national defense when in fact we are the closest allies. 
At some point, President Kennedy discovered portions of the truth concerning the drugs and the aliens. He issued an ultimatum in 1963 to MJ-12. President Kennedy assured them that if they did not clean up the drug problem, he would. He informed MJ-12 that he intended to reveal the presence of aliens to the American people within the following year and ordered a plan developed to implement his decision. President Kennedy was not a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and knew nothing of Alternative 2 or Alternative 3 that I can find out. Internationally, the operations were supervised by an executive committee known as the Policy Committee. In the United States, they were supervised by MJ-12 and in the Soviet Union by a sister organization. President Kennedy's decision, of course, struck fear into these people. His assassination was ordered by the Policy Committee, and the order was carried out by agents of MJ-12 in Dallas. President John F. Kennedy was murdered by the Secret Service agent who drove his car in the motorcade, and the act is plainly visible in the film. It was stated in the documents that I saw. The assassin's name is William Greer. Watch the driver and not Kennedy when you view the film, when you can find a film that even shows it. All of the witnesses who were close enough to the car to see William Greer shoot Kennedy were themselves all murdered within two years of the event. That's fact. The Warren Commission was a farce, and Council on Foreign Relations members made up the majority of its panel. They succeeded in snowing the American people, and they hid the truth. And many other patriots who have attempted to reveal the alien secret have also been murdered throughout the intervening years. And that is why I've been so careful about the information that I released, because it was so important that I get here today to be able to tell you the truth. And what happens after me, after today, is of no consequence whatsoever. But what you do is. During the era of the United States' initial space exploration and the moon landings, every launch was accompanied by alien craft. A moon base dubbed Luna was sighted and filmed by the Apollo astronauts. Domes, spires, tall round structures which look like silos, huge T-shaped mining vehicles which left stitch-like tracks in the lunar surface, and extremely large as well as small alien craft appear in the photographs. It is, in fact, a joint United States, Russian, and alien base. The space program is a farce and an unbelievable waste of money. Alternative 3 is a reality, and it is not at all science fiction. Most of the Apollo astronauts were severely shaken by this experience, and their lives and subsequent statements reflect the depths of the revelation and the effect of the muzzle order which followed. They were ordered to remain silent or suffer the extreme penalty, death, which was termed an expediency. One astronaut actually did talk to the British producers of the TV expose Alternative 3, confirming many of the allegations. However, I do not know who it was. In the book, Alternative 3, the pseudonym Bob Groden was used in place of the astronaut's identity. It was also stated that he committed suicide in 1978. This cannot be validated by any source, and I believe that several so-called facts in the book are really disinformation. However, I can assure you that Alternative 3 is real. I firmly believe that this disinformation is a result of pressure put upon the authors and is meant to nullify the effect upon the populace of the British TV expose entitled Alternative 3. The headquarters of the international conspiracy is in Geneva, Switzerland. The ruling body is made up of representatives of the governments involved as well as the executive members of the group known as the Bilderbergers. Meetings are held by the policy committee when necessary on a nuclear submarine beneath the polar ice cap. The secrecy is such that this was the only method which could ensure that the meetings could not be bugged and is the only place where they discuss their most secret matters. I can say that the book is at least 70% true from my own knowledge and the knowledge of my sources. I believe that the disinformation was an attempt to compromise the British TV expose with information which could be proven false, just as the Eisenhower briefing document was released here in the United States under the contingency plan Majestic 12, and which can also be proven false. Since our interaction with the aliens began, we have come into possession of technology beyond our wildest dreams. A craft named Aurora exists at Area 51, which makes regular trips into space. 
It is a one-stage ship called a TAV or trans-atmospheric vehicle.